Hello and welcome. The Lord be with you. Welcome to our online service marking the start of Lent. We're combining our Ash Wednesday service with our service for the first Sunday of Lent. Lent is a season of fasting, penitence, Bible study and prayer for Christians all over the world. And it's wonderful that through YouTube we are joined by Christians all over the world. We know we have regular worshippers joining us from Argentina, the USA and India and probably many other places too. So I'm going to begin now with the traditional call of the church to Christians everywhere to observe a Holy Lent, at the end of which I invite you to join me in the Trisagion, the ancient prayer of penitence. Brothers and sisters in Christ, since early days Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's Passion and Resurrection, and prepared for this by a season of penitence and fasting. By carefully keeping these days, Christians take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the Gospel, and so grow in faith and devotion to our Lord. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a Holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer and fasting, by self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's Holy Word. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. So now we continue with the great hymn for the start of Lent, 40 days and 40 nights. As we prepare to hear God's word, I am going to invite us to share a moment of silent prayer before I offer up the church's prayer for the start of Lent, the Collect for Ash Wednesday. So let us pray for grace to keep Lent faithfully. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. Now our reading is going to be brought to us by Neve Renton, a member of our mission community's Network Youth Church. The reading is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 to 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was trembling up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from the heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, I am well pleased with you. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Thanks be to God. One of the traditional disciplines of Lent is the deeper study of God's Word, and often in Lent churches get together for Lent groups where we study God's Word together. Now we're going to do this slightly differently this year on Zoom, and you can find a couple of introductory videos on our channel explaining what we're doing and how you can participate. The discussion in Lent groups will follow the themes set out by uh, the Sunday services and are based on a set of notes prepared by Bishop Emma Einson, the Bishop of Penrith. So for today's sermon, I'm actually going to deliver Bishop Emma's sermon, which sets the scene for what we're going to be doing in our Lent course. So this is Bishop Emma's sermon, delivered in my voice. At the beginning of Lent, we traditionally focus on Jesus' temptation in the wilderness as a model for our own overcoming of temptations, whatever those might be. Some years, the reading is from Matthew or Luke, where we have a much longer account with details of the three temptations Jesus faced and how he dealt with each one. But this year it is Mark, with its short and stark description of Jesus in the wilderness with the wild beasts and the angels. Right at the start of his ministry, Jesus is driven by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. This is part of his training for the ministry to come. An intense time of endurance, of isolation, and it's no coincidence that the word quarantine literally means 40 days. Satan's intention was to tempt Jesus away from the mission that God had given him, to question his identity as the Son of God, and to try to divert him with offers of quick and glittering success, rather than the hard task of saving the world that he'd been sent by God to fulfil. So this was quarantine for Jesus, alone in the wilderness with the trainer from hell, literally. In the Bible, though, the, witness, the wilderness has always been a place of encounter with God. God's people, Israel, wandered in the wilderness for 40, 40 years. Elijah spent 40 days in the wilderness and had there his most profound encounter with God. We've become familiar with our own kind of testing in the wilderness experience over the past year due to the suffering and restrictions of the Covid pandemic. Although not comparable with Jesus' desert temptations, isolation has been a very real concept for many. Not being able to access all the things that bring us comfort, enjoyment, consolation, life. In the biblical narrative, the wilderness was an alien and inhospitable place for humans, the opposite of the sort of place where you'd want to settle down or stay for any length of time. When will this all end is a cry we have heard so often during the lockdown period. But this wilderness, we're told by Mark, although hostile to human habitation, was home to other kinds of creatures, wild beasts. Mark says that Jesus was with the wild animals, Anyone who's read the children's book Where the Wild Things Are by Morris Sendak knows that it's often tricky to tell whether the wild beasts are on your side or not. They're wild and untamable. They weren't pets. But Jesus doesn't seem to be threatened by them. 
perhaps the wild beasts show us that God's mission in God's kingdom will never be safe or predictable. There may be a rumpus, but the wild beasts can become your friends if, like Jesus and Max, you are not afraid. Also in the wilderness, Jesus encounters angels who minister to him as they did to Elijah when he fled to the wilderness. Even in this place, devoid of comfort and all the things most necessary for human life, it is not without God's provision. So I wonder what this short and sharp description of Jesus facing temptations in the wilderness might offer to us in the way of comfort and direction this Lent. Lent is a wilderness season, a time when we are confronted with our own weaknesses, but invited also to spend focused time, alone and together, reflecting on who we are, deepening our walk with God, hearing his voice of affirmation, calling us into the walk of discipleship, ministry and mission he has for each of us. It is also a time when we're reflecting on and launching our refreshed God for All vision right across Cumbria. A vision to release the whole people of God for the whole mission of God, for the transformation of Cumbria in Jesus' name. Under that overarching vision sit four thim simple themes. To follow daily, to speak boldly, care deeply and to tread gently. We're going to explore each of these themes during our Zoom Lent groups this year as we reflect on the Sunday lectionary readings for the five weeks of Lent beginning with today. So what might Jesus' tempting in the wilderness show us about each of these themes? Firstly, we might notice that it was only after this time in the wilderness that Jesus began his mission of announcing the arrival of the Kingdom of God. Bishop Emma says that her prayer through this whole Covid pandemic has been that out of this time of severe testing, God might bring something new and fruitful. A new sense of purpose, a fresh sense of vocation after the stripping away of everything. As we emerge from this wilderness experience, we may be tempted to head off in all sorts of directions that may be tempting but which are not God's will for us. And so we need a clear sense of vision to know how and where God is calling us to minister for him in the weeks and months ahead. That may be true of us as individuals too. What is God bringing out of this time of trial for you in terms of a new sense of direction, calling and ministry? Perhaps a new sense to follow daily in everyday life. Secondly, Jesus' time of testing in the wilderness might cause us to examine our own relationships with the wild beasts, whether that's the metaphorical wild beasts, beasts that we're afraid might stand in the way of our being able to fulfil something for God, perhaps the wild beasts of fear or cynicism or apathy. How can we learn to tame our fears, to make friends with the things that scare us most, so that we can be as free as Jesus was to live out his mission in the world. And how might Jesus being with the wild beasts cause us to think about the way we are with God's creation in the natural world? The Bible tells us that he was with the beasts in the same way that he was with the disciples. Perhaps God's creation is more of a partner in mission than we ever allow ourselves to realise. As we seek to tread gently in this world, this Lent, perhaps we might see the natural world as a significant part of that. And thirdly, perhaps we will find reassurance that even in the most difficult times, God sent his angels to care deeply for Jesus, and he does it for us too. This Lent, our prayer, is that we might each, as mission communities and churches, become more and more aware of God's day-by-day -day provision for us, the unobtrusive ministry of the angels. We are never alone. As a whole people of God, we are called to echo the care God has for us in our care of each other, to care deeply for each other and for the communities in which he places us. Perhaps we need to ask ourselves, whose angel can I be today? And from that point of quarantine, 
after his testing in the wilderness, after his choosing to follow God, not the temptations of Satan, Jesus bursts back onto the scene, fulfilling his mission, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, speaking boldly. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. That's what we're called to do too, to speak boldly of all that God has shown and taught us, to speak boldly about the coming of his kingdom, a kingdom of justice, peace, wholeness and flourishing for all people and for the created world itself too. Over this coming Lent, let us pray that God would open our eyes and enlarge our hearts to see the possibilities of proclaiming in the power of the Holy Spirit the good news of his kingdom. So I'm going to finish now by leading us in the Vision Refresh prayer. Living Lord, as we offer you our common life, refresh our vision that we may know your will and seek to follow in all your ways. May we follow daily as your disciples, care deeply for one another in community, speak boldly your gospel words of love and tread gently as faithful stewards of your goodness. We ask this in the power of your holy name as creator, redeemer and sustainer of our lives, today and forever. Amen. Now ordinarily at this point in the service I would mark your forehead with a cross of ashes made from burning last year's palm crosses. It's an ancient sign of penitence from which the term Ash Wednesday derives. We take down the palm crosses that were blessed on Palm Sunday last year and we burn them to make the ash with which we anoint ourselves. As a reminder of our human frailty, as an act of commitment to turn away from the habits and attitudes that harm us, and as an act of love, turning back to God with sincere hearts. So I'm going to take down my palm cross from last year and uh, add it to the others to burn this year's ashes. And here they are. Now, before our act of penitence, I just want to spend a moment thinking about this year's unusual Lent. What I love about Mark's account of Jesus' temptation in the wilderness is that he doesn't dwell on the trials. Instead, he links the time Jesus spends in the desert with Jesus' baptism, and in particular, him hearing his father's voice. Now remember, up to this point, he's just been the village carpenter. And then, as he's baptised, for the first time as far as we know, he hears his father's voice saying to him, You are my son. I love you and I'm pleased with you. And immediately the Spirit drove Jesus out into the wilderness. And immediately is the recurring catchphrase of Mark's Gospel. And here it's like a bolt of lightning. Jesus hears his father say those three important things and immediately he's driven out into the wilderness. And note, because this is very important, it's not the devil who drives him into the wilderness, it's the Holy Spirit. Why? Because Jesus wants to go away and dwell on those words his father spoke to him until they sink deep into his soul and form who he is. And everything he faces in the rest of his life stem from that point. And I think that might be an important message for us this Lent. In Lent we normally think of giving up stuff we enjoy, but this Lent we've got little enough joy, frankly, and I don't think God wants to take any more joy out of our lives. It looks as though I probably am going to have to give up having my hair cut for Lent. But instead of being hard on ourselves, I suggest we do what Jesus did. Spend significant amounts of time, if we can, alone in that quarantine that Bishop Emma was talking about. Letting God's words of love sink deep into our souls until they form who we are. Because thanks to Jesus saving us from our sins, each of us is God's child. And so God says to each of us what he said to Jesus on that occasion. You are my child. I love you. And I am pleased with you. So with that in mind, 
I'm now going to lead us in the traditional act of penitence that begins Ash Wednesday, and you're invited to join in with the words in bold type. Let us now call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God. God the Father, have mercy upon us. God the Son, have mercy upon us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy upon us. Holy, blessed and glorious Trinity, good Lord, deliver us. From all evil and mischief, from pride and vanity and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred and malice, and from all evil intent, good Lord, deliver us. From sloth, worldliness and love of money, from hardness of heart and contempt for your word and for your laws, good Lord, deliver us. From sins of body and mind, from the deceits of the world, the flesh and the devil, good Lord, deliver us. In all times of sorrow, in all times of joy, in the hour of death and at the day of judgment, good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood and obedience, by your baptism, fasting and temptation, good Lord, deliver us. By your ministry in word and work, by your mighty acts of power, and by your preaching of the kingdom, good Lord, deliver us. By your agony and trial, by your cross and passion, and by your precious death and burial, good Lord, deliver us. By your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by your sending of the Holy Spirit, good Lord, deliver us. Give us true repentance. Forgive us our sins of negligence and ignorance and our deliberate sins. And grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your holy word. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. And this is the point where, ordinarily, I would mark your forehead with a cross of ashes. Obviously, I can't reach through the screen to anoint you, but I'm going to say the words I would normally say. And as Carolyn and I receive the ashes here, we invite you to receive them inwardly and be still in prayer as we listen to the hymn, There is a Hope that Burns Within My Heart. So, dear friends in Christ, I invite you inwardly in your spirit to receive these ashes as a sign of the spirit of penitence with which we shall keep this season of Lent. God our Father, you create us from the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be for us a sign of our penitence and a symbol of our mortality, for it is, for it is by your grace alone that we receive eternal life in the name of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Turn away from sin, and believe the gospel. <clears throat> Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Turn away from sin, and believe the gospel.
voice beyond the beckoning grave to see the matchless beauty of a day divine when I behold his face when suffering cease and sorrows die and every longing satisfied then joy unspeakable will flood my soul for I am true Make our hearts clean, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Together we pray. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. And so the Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offences. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Now I'm going to lead us in the peace. In church before Covid, uh, we would normally offer each other a handshake as a sign of peace, or if we're particularly friendly, perhaps a hug or something like that. Now, we've not been able to do that uh, during the pandemic, but if you're at home with other people in your household bubble, uh, perhaps when I've led us in the words of peace, you might exchange the peace with one another in your household as we sing our final hymn. And of course, if you're on your own, then you might just remember that you're not really alone after all. It's one of the great perks of being a Christian. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace.
as we come to the end of our service, may I remind you to check out our videos introducing the Zoom Lent groups and encourage you to join us. And if you are one of those people who's been worshipping with us during the pandemic from far away, uh, then you would also be welcome to join us. It would be lovely to get to meet you. So do check out those videos to find out how you can join. But now, as we close our service, we're going to listen to the Dismissal Gospel, which is a, a traditional feature of the Ash Wednesday liturgy. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbours, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who need no repentance. This is the Gospel of the Lord. So now, remembering that we were those lost sheep whom Christ came to save, I invite you to receive God's blessing. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Be at peace as you love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm.